Starship will be the world's most powerful launch vehicle ever developed that could ferry humans into space using its two giant stages. One of the most critical moves in the journey is when the Starship has to separate itself from its booster and redirect itself to its destination. This process is called stage separation. The main purpose of it is to get an extra kick of thrust to overcome the weight on Earth and also to eliminate the mass in space by throwing the unused parts away from the payload in order to reduce fuel consumption. There are many different methods currently in use for stage separation, but SpaceX, as usual, came up with a new idea. It may sound crazy, but somehow they skipped using the separation mechanism. So it's very true when we say that SpaceX is redefining rocketry, but they are really redefining the cost to get to space. In this video, we are going to explain the unusual method that SpaceX came up with to skip the separation mechanism and other methods that are currently in use with other rockets. In order to understand this new method of stage separation, we first need to understand the Starship stages. Starship consists of two main stages. The first stage is known as Super Heavy, a towering stainless steel booster that's main mission is to help the company's massive Starship escape the Earth's gravitational pull. It stands at 230 feet tall, and it will use more than 30 sea-level Raptor engines that will likely produce more than 5,500 tons of thrust, making it both the largest and most powerful rocket booster ever built or tested. SpaceX won't waste this gigantic building by dumping it into the sea or allowing it to burn up in the sky, as in old launch systems, but they designed it to be recovered and reused, meaning that after each mission, it will come back to Earth and land using its four grid fins to get ready for the next mission. The second stage is the upper stage of the system. With its nose cone and landing fins, it's designed to resemble the golden age of science fiction. It uses six Raptor engines, a mixture of sea level and vacuum optimized engines, to obtain the ability to transport satellites, payloads, crew, and cargo to a variety of destinations on Earth, lunar, or Martian landing sites, since it's completely reusable, just like the first stage. In fact, Musk wants to use this stage to send one million people to Mars by 2050 by launching three Starship rockets every day. NASA also picked this stage of the rocket to land the next Americans on the moon in its Artemis mission. With that said, you may get an idea of how massive and perfectly designed this two-stage system is. But to have a successful journey, each stage in the rocket should be separated safely. It's one of the most critical moves in the rocket journey. Every rocket that delivers crew or cargo into space has to do this move carefully with no room for mistakes. When SpaceX stacked the two stages for the first time, many people raised the question, how will the two stages of this rocket separate when it's time to do so? In newly developed rockets, it's complicated to design a new separation mechanism that could fit the system perfectly. This is not the case with SpaceX. They made a very smart move to skip designing the separation mechanism. They rely on physics to make it embedded within the internal rocket design. According to Musk, Starship will have no separation mechanism at all. Instead, at some point during the design or testing process, Musk decided that a separation mechanism was entirely unnecessary and that the same effect could be more or less replicated by using existing systems on Super Heavy. Musk wants to use the three sea-level gimbling Raptor engines to make a small but significant rotation on the rocket within seconds before the separation which will make Super Heavy eject the Starship away from it. The separation will happen because at that moment, Starship is like five times heavier than Super Heavy, so the force is concentrated on the upper stage. Then with a small movement of the engines, this creates a centripetal force, which causes the separation and allows the ship to effectively float away from the booster in a straight and stable line. Then with the use of its cold gas thrusters, it can settle its propellant and from there, it can ignite its six Raptor engines to head to orbit. In return for this unusual method, if it works, SpaceX can entirely exclude the development of a pusher spring system capable of pushing a 1,300-ton Starship away from Super Heavy. But you may wonder, could this affect the engine nozzles? In Starship's case, the answer is no. 
The reason is because all of the six engines are embedded under the skirt, so there is zero chance of any nozzles being damaged by impacting the booster interstage. This method is very similar to what SpaceX currently uses to deploy its satellites from Falcon rockets. By spinning the upper stage end over end and letting the spacecraft just float away, thanks to centripetal forces. But how do other boosters separate from their spacecraft? In most rockets, we have two different types of separation strategies. Some rely on latching actuators, simply by sending electronic signals to a motor in order to attach or detach the rocket stages. And other rockets, particularly Russian rockets, rely on hot staging, in which a separating stage will ignite its engine slightly before, or at the time as it's released, blasting the stage below it. Also, some rockets have more than two stages. The more stages you have, the more risky and complex it gets. That's why most of the modern rockets are only two stages. But if it is really riskier to increase the number of stages, why do most rockets have a multi-stage system? There are two main reasons for that. In order to reduce the weight of the rocket in space, you have to get rid of the unused parts. The more weight you have, the more fuel you consume. So it's a great idea to have a separated tank with its engines forming stage one to do its mission and leave the vehicle to achieve much higher speed and altitudes. The second reason is the design of the rocket engine. Since lower pressure at exit equals larger nozzle, vacuum-optimized engines have larger nozzles. That's why the booster stages engines, sea level engines, will always be different from the cargo stage engines, vacuum engines. SpaceX designed the Starship to be two stages in order to make it safer so it will only have one stage separation process. And also by skipping the separation mechanism, it will reduce the weight, which will positively affect the fuel consumption. We are getting closer to watch this gigantic rocket in reality, with the next milestone for SpaceX in the first orbital flight of the Starship, flying with its two stages stacked together. What do you think? Is the new SpaceX separation mechanism going to succeed on its first test? Let's discuss it down below. Thanks for watching.